Aphantasia. So, if you close your eyes, you'll probably be able to create pictures and images using your imagination. You can picture a juicy red apple, a puppy, or even your dream home. But if a person with aphantasia tries to do the same thing, all they would see is complete, utter darkness. They do not have the ability to voluntarily create mental images because their mind's eye is more like a mind's blind eye. To be clear, these folks aren't lacking creativity, they just process information differently. They're their brains skip the visual slideshow and go straight to the bullet points. Think of it this way. Most people have a projector in their heads ready to play mental movies on demand, but with the Aphantasia people, their projectors came without a bulb. Funny enough, Aphantasia only got its name in 2015. Before that, people just assumed everyone could imagine things. It was neurologist Adam Zeman who coined the term after a patient reported losing his ability to visualize after surgery. Turns out, it was wasn't that rare. Many people have aphantasia and don't even realize it, which ironically is kind of hard to picture. About 1 to 5% of people might have it. That means in a room of 100 people, 1 to 5 of them are probably wondering why everyone's raving about picturing anything. For them, visualizing stuff is like describing colors to someone who's never seen a rainbow. Balance syndrome. Just imagine that you are at an all-you-can-eat buffet, plates overflowing with pizza, cake, and enough food to make Gordon Ramsay faint. But as you reach for a fork, your hands suddenly start acting like the claw from those frustrating arcade machines instead of just simply grabbing it. The worst of all is that when you look at the buffet, you only see one dish at a time, as if life has suddenly switched to single item mode. Well, there's a very high chance you have balance syndrome, a condition where multitasking is not just hard, it's neurologically impossible. You see, balance syndrome is a rare neurological disorder caused by damage to both sides of the parietal lobe, the parts of your brain responsible for understanding space, movement, and where objects are in relation to you. In simpler words, your brain's GPS and multitasking app malfunctioning all at once. If you have balance syndrome, you will experience three major glitches in your mental operating system. There's the simultaneous agnosia, where your brain gets stage fright and can only see one thing at a time. For instance, instance, instead of looking at a tree, you might focus on a single leaf, while the entire forest disappears into the background like a bad zoom blur. Then you'd get the optic ataxia, a fancy word for when your hands and eyes stop communicating, like a team in a toxic work environment. You'll see your coffee mug, but when you try to reach for it, your hand grabs the air like it's practicing mime. Finally, you'd experience ocular apraxia, a condition where your eyes lose the ability to look around voluntarily. However, Balintz syndrome isn't something you're born with and is usually caused by bilateral parietal lobe damage, which can happen due to stroke, trauma, or any neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Cotard's delusion. Just imagine waking up in the morning and instead of thinking about coffee and what to wear to work, your brain starts to tell you that you're a corpse. Yep, totally deceased. Sounds absurd, right? Well, tell that to people who have Cotard's delusion, also known Known as walking corpse syndrome, where someone genuinely believes they're dead, missing vital organs, or decomposing. First discovered in 1880 by French neurologist Jules Cotard, the disorder was called le délire de négation, or the delirium of negation, which basically means your brain is playing the ultimate April Fools on you. However, you should know that this condition is not a Halloween prank, but a very serious condition. Some people even think they're rotting or that the Grim Reaper forgot to finish the job. If you have Cotard's delusion, you might even stop eating, breathing, or leaving your bed because, well, why bother feeding a corpse? But even zombies eat brains, but uh, that, that's another discussion. Perhaps the most famous case was Mademoiselle X, a 19th century French woman who was so sure she was dead that she refused to eat and begged to be taken to the morgue. She survived only because people around her refused to accept her death notice. Well, unfortunately, this condition is not caused by rogue witches spells or a zombie bite, but is linked to serious conditions like severe depression, brain injuries, schizophrenia, and neurological diseases like epilepsy or multiple sclerosis. Thankfully, Cotard's delusion isn't a one-way ticket to the underworld, and treatment options like antidepressants or antipsychotics and therapy 
therapy can give your brain the reality check it desperately needs. Prosopagnosia. So, you woke up this morning to a house full of strangers. Everyone there is talking to you like you've been friends for ages, and they've even dragged you down to breakfast, but your brain literally cannot recognize who they are. But then, when you look around the room, you see a face that looks like yours in pictures with all of them. Come to find out, it's your family members? Sadly, you have a condition called prosopagnosia, or face blindness, where recognizing faces is harder than solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Basically, prosopagnosia is a neurological condition that makes it downright impossible to recognize people's faces, even though you spend every waking moment with them. It's not about bad memory or needing glasses. Your brain simply can't process faces like it should. Now, most people with this condition are simply just born this way, but sometimes it can be caused by damage to the fusion gurus, which is the part of the brain responsible for detecting faces. Think of it as your brain's version of face ID, but it's permanently broken. Sadly, even though this condition might make living amongst people really difficult, because imagine how awkward it'll be to forget your partner's face every time you see them, there are still ways to cope. You can try to recognize the people around you by their voices or any unique features they have, like moles or glasses. But if someone changes their hairstyle or shaves their beard, then it's back to square one. Anton Babinski Syndrome Anton Babinski Syndrome is a rare neurological condition where someone is completely blind but firmly believes they can still see. Yep, their brain is basically like, nah, we're good, while their eyes are on permanent out-of-office mode. Now, this absurd syndrome usually occurs after damage to the occipital lobe, which is the part of the brain responsible for vision. Accidents like strokes, brain trina, or tumors are often responsible for these damages. You see, the human brain absolutely hates gaps in its reality. Your brain doesn't know it's blind, so it just assumes everything is fine and dandy, filling in the blanks like a bad artist sketching a masterpiece with crayons. It's like when you hear a muffled conversation in the next room and make up wild theories about what's being said. Well, diagnosing Anton Babinski syndrome is tricky because patients don't think they have a problem. Imagine trying to convince someone they're blind when they're adamant they just watched a squirrel do backflips. Unfortunately, there is no specific cure for the condition, so the best way to help the patient is by managing the underlying condition, like stroke or trauma, and by also helping them understand and accept their condition. Semantic Dementia Semantic Dementia, SD, is a rare brain disorder that slowly erases the meaning of words, objects, and concepts. It's like your brain decides to Marie Kondo your mental dictionary, but instead of sparking joy, it sparks confusion. You'll literally start losing the ability to recognize that a cat is a cat, or that a coffee mug is for drinking and not, say, a tiny hat. At first, semantic dementia is subtle. You might mix up words by by, let's say, calling a dog a horse, or a pineapple a spiky orange ball. Which, let's admit, isn't entirely wrong. But over time, though, you might forget what words mean altogether. However, SD doesn't affect your problem-solving or day-to-day -day memory early on, but your ability to understand or express meaning takes a hit. This condition starts when the temporal lobes of the brain, which is like the brain's library of meaning, gets targeted. However, unlike Alzheimer's, where people often forget events or people, SD affects the meaning of things. Memory for daily events remains sharp for a while, so someone might remember they had toast for breakfast, but not know what toast means anymore. Although the exact cause of semantic dementia is unknown because scientists aren't sure why the temporal lobes just suddenly started to shrink and die, they still think it is related to genetics, but may be linked to another different group of disorders. The not-so-fun part is that there is no cure for semantic dementia. But don't lose hope just yet, because the treatments focus on managing symptoms. And even though you might forget words entirely, the condition can't erase the moments. So just call everything a thingy and keep living. Korsakov's Syndrome Picture this. You walk into a bar and the bartender greets you warmly. Ten minutes later, after making your drink, he looks at you like you've just wandered in for the first time and says, Hey, welcome, what can I get you? Now you're confused and wondering if he didn't just serve you a drink just now. What you don't know is that your 
bartender has Korsakov syndrome, a rare but fascinating condition that plays hide-and-seek with your memory. He's not ignoring you, his brain just hit the pause button on forming new memories. Basically, Korsakov's syndrome is like a memory thief that sneaks in during the night. It's basically a neurological disorder caused by a severe deficiency in vitamin B1, aka thiamine. You see, without this vitamin, the brain struggles to function properly, and this would lead to both retrograde amnesia, which is the loss of old memories, and enterograde amnesia, which is the inability to form new memories. You'll also experience confabulation which is when the brain fills in memory gaps with made-up stories to complete all the missing parts. This condition mostly attacks people who are heavy drinkers, because alcohol can block the absorption of thiamine and damage the brain. However, it's not exclusive to drinkers and can also affect people with severe malnutrition, prolonged vomiting, or anorexia. But then, Korsakoff syndrome is very treatable if caught early, and with thiamine supplements, a balanced diet, and alcohol abstinence, you can get better. Think of it like catching a typo before hitting send on an important email. Akinatopsia. Let's say you're at a high-speed car race and the adrenaline is pumping as the cars zoom by. Except instead of seeing the cars whiz past in a blur, they look like a series of photographs. You see one car at the start of the race, then another over there at the end, like a flipbook with pages missing. Unfortunately, you have something called akinatopsia, or motion blindness, which is a rare neurological condition where you're your brain sees everything in life like it's a slideshow but without the transition. You see, your brain's visual system is like the director of an action movie that stitches together all of the frames of what you see into smooth, continuous motion. And the star of this show is your middle temporal visual area, MTV5, in the brain. However, if you have echinotopsia, this brain region gets damaged, usually due to a stroke, head trauma, or sometimes neurodegenerative diseases. It's like firing your movie director and replacing them with someone who only understands stop-motion animation. So now, objects and people don't flow smoothly. They jump from one position to another, making it feel like a glitchy video game. Things like pouring coffee or crossing the road would become a terrifying nightmare because you can't tell how fast everything is moving. Unfortunately, there's no specific cure for this condition, and rehabilitation focuses on adapting to the condition rather than fixing it. Think of it like becoming a Jedi, learning to trust your instincts rather than your eyeballs. You might try to use sounds and listen for movement cues, then you can also break tasks like pouring a drink into steps that'll make it easier. Plus, avoiding fast environments and crowded places can be very helpful. Apotemnophilia. Imagine waking up every day feeling like your right leg is an intruder, an unwanted guest at the party that is your body. It's there, it works fine, but it just feels alien. Like someone handed you an extra phone charger you didn't order. So now you're literally trying to get rid of the leg so you'd feel complete. Sounds ironic, right? Wanting to remove a limb to feel whole? But for someone with apotemnophilia, you'll basically feel an overwhelming desire to amputate a healthy limb. It's as if your body says, hey, let's play the game of less is more. Except the less part involves cutting off a body part instead of, you know, trimming your hair. Now, you're probably wondering why anyone would want to voluntarily part with a perfectly good limb. And to be very honest, even scientists are still scratching their heads. But there are a few leading theories. Some people's desire for amputation may stem from deep-seated psychological or emotional issues like unresolved trauma or obsessive thoughts. It's not that they hate the limb, it's just that it doesn't feel right to them. Like wearing shoes that don't fit. You know, those shoes are cute, but they're cutting off circulation to your toes. For some reason, it's all about self-identity, so they may feel and identify as an amputee at heart, so wanting to cut off the limb is the only way to truly be their real self. However, people with apotemnophilia don't just wake up one day and decide to cut off their arm. The desire often begins slowly and manifests in lots of different ways. Some people pretend to be amputees and use wheelchairs or crutches to simulate the experience. It's like a dress rehearsal for the real thing. But in the most extreme cases, individuals have resorted to self-amputation in an attempt to feel complete. It's kind of like a DIY project gone wrong, except instead of assembling an IKEA bookshelf, you're hacking off body parts. Sadly, apotemnophilia is often very misunderstood with body dysmorphic disorder, BDD, and self-harm tendencies because of how rare and unusual the desire is. Thank you.